back to Salt Lake City, Utah, everyone, for our continuing live coverage of the 2011 Berta Sport USA Team Handball Club National Championships. We are at the Salt Palace Convention Center in downtown Salt Lake City, Utah. And for the second game of our doubleheader, we're going to bring you an exciting men's elite division final between Chicago Inter and the New York City Team Handball Club. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ken Tomash, along with Craig Rote, as we will bring you the exciting coverage of the men's elite division gold medal match between two teams who are very interesting to watch. I'm Ken Tomash. He's Craig Rote. Uh, Craig, we're looking here at a, at a very two very powerful teams, New York with a long tradition, Chicago with uh, an even longer tradition when you look at some of the veteran faces on their roster, and they gutted out a win last night over the young team West Point Black in the semifinals to get here, but it's a little different look because their goalkeeper sustained a concussion, so they've had to kind of change things up a little bit for Chicago. What's Chicago going to do? Uh, Chicago has actually had to, uh, their goalie was not clear to play. Tonight, Philip Florin will be playing in the goal. He's normally a uh, center back. And what that means for them is they're going to have their hands full against a very active uh, line penetrating team like New York. New York was the national champions two years ago, beating Houston in the final in Elgin, Illinois. They come in here today, as you see them there, in red on a roll. They lost in the semifinals to the then New England Freeze. They are 5-0 and in this tournament. They're scoring 31 goals per game. There you see Christo Colt from Estonia, number three, one of their big guns, but only one. This New York team can come at you from so many different angles, Craig, that it's really hard for any team, even with their normal goalie, to stop. New York can hit at any of the at any of the defensive positions they can score. And not only can they score from them, but if they're attacked at the line, their penetration is unbelievable. They'll land at the goalie. We just watched an exciting women's final that saw Inter's women's team beat New York's uh, team 20 to 19. You're gonna see an even better game here, we think. Here's, if you're new to the sport of team handball, here's what we're looking at. Uh, we see about 40 goals a game. Uh, timeouts are limited. The clock runs almost continuously. The ball's about a pound. It feels like a lot more when it's flung at you from uh, short range at 50, 60 miles an hour. We're playing on a court that's about 40 meters long by 20 meters wide, and there are uh, seven players on a side. A goalkeeper and six court players. Here we go. We're going to play two 30-minute halves. The clock will run almost continuously. It'll stop in case of injury or if the ball gets loose and skips on down the hall. We'll have a 10-minute halftime. And dynamic substitution, meaning you will see players go in and out. Uh, they, there's some rules about when and where they can go in and out, but pretty much we'll see players come in and off the bench. There you see the New York City Team Handball Club founded in 1973. They were champions in 2008 and 2009. And in black, their opponents Internazionale of Chicago, founded in 1991. They finished sixth in this competition a year ago. Finished second to New York in Group B here in this tournament, but beat West Point Black 28-27 in a grueling semifinal last night. A semifinal that was costly because their goalkeeper, Lukas Kantor, suffered a concussion and was not cleared to play for, by the doctors. So you see, as uh, Craig Rowe just told you, that they're gonna go with Philip Florin in goal, normally a center back. So that transition is gonna be one that we're gonna have to keep an eye on. Sometimes guys can rise to the occasion in a, in a big match with the stakes that, as they are, uh, but he's gonna need some help from his defenders, don't you think, Craig? Chicago is a very physical team. They will do the substitutions constantly. In, in previous games, like yesterday, they were running three or four substitutions at a time, which means three of the offensive players will come out at transition at the half court, and then the three others will come in. They're a very strong team, very experienced team. They have what it takes to beat New York if they hold themselves together. Here you see the New York team being introduced. And Chicago's very veteran players looking to win a championship here. Two years ago, they were the ninth place team in the competition. Last year, finished sixth in Las Vegas. This year, looking to step up. They're just a game away from claiming the championship that New York feels is their own as they uh, were just a narrow loss in the semifinals a year ago. Coming away from... Uh, last year's tournament 
uh, losing in the semifinals, but here they are back in the final, and they have been an outstanding offensive team, as we mentioned, outscoring their opponents 155 to 118. That's 31 goals per game. They do it from all over the floor, and we saw how physical that first game was, Craig. Will this be more physical? The first game, I, I because of the stakes that are at hand right now, I believe Chicago can rise up, but this New York team is a very physical team, and they're going to have to withstand it to make it, and if they need to keep it close by the end of the first half. Weapons to look for for New York. Obviously, Syed Shalabi and Yoli Radovnovich. <laughs> Radovnovich. He is their leading scorer with 32 goals. Chicago's leading scorer. They get a little more balanced attack. They've got three guys near the top of the scoring charts. Slavik Bednarik is their leading scorer with 23 goals. And again, it's going to be all about defense for them here, at least in the early going, as we'll see how long it takes Philip Florin to settle down and get used to playing in the pipes. Is, are the first few minutes, Craig, of this match, you think, going to tell us a lot about how it's going to go? <laughs> yes, I think so. And I think when uh, for Chicago, number 14, Simon Muller, he's going to direct both offense and defense. A very physical, active player. He's going to be coming across uh, the center court line at full speed, trying to penetrate New York's defense. And he'll be the first one back uh, on when he's coming back in the other transition. Ivan Ignatovic, who's a member of the U.S. national team pool, will start in goal for New York. And New York in red will take the opening throw, and they'll be attacking from left to right here to start this gold medal match in the men's elite division. Ken Tomash and Craig Rowe with you. As we're just underway from the Salt Palace Convention Center in downtown Salt Lake City, Utah. New York moving the ball quickly. First foul of the match. Goes to Simon Muller for Chicago. Here we see that quick movement. Like we said, the transition game right there, the cutting to the line, uh, New York can hit at any of the spots. Again, if you're if you're new to the sport of team handball, we've got six court players and a goalkeeper and one of the objectives will be to move the ball from side to side and look for a an open shot from one of the wings and restarts after fouls will come from that broken line there at nine meters here's Chicago on the attack Muller with a shot and that was disrupted just enough by New York's Beanie Mustafa Mustafa obviously a key player for New York today here comes that restart as you take a good look from high on the rafters here at the Salt Palace Convention Center. Bednarik now is kind of running the show as the center back. It's kind of like the point guard. Muller gets it back to Bednarik. He's tied up in the post and we'll have a foul called. New York runs with a very strong middle four. Very hard to get through. So they'll be looking to spring Summit on the wings. First shot of the game by Marcin Koziol is stopped by Ignatovic. Knocked out of play and he's got to track it down. And there, take a look at the powerful oh, 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 shot shit, here shit, shit. by Marcin Koziol. That'll sting the palms. Now it's New York on the attack. Looking for the first goal of this game. We're just over two minutes into this one. Men's gold medal match. Shalavi. Loose ball there as they tried to find Crystal Colt. And a foul called. Now we'll see substitutions already as Slavik McNarek will check back in for Chicago. He's got the ball number eight. He went out on the defensive end. He's back in there on the offensive end. McNarek again. Tied up by Ahmed Saad. Muller bounces in the corner to Marco Demula. Quick shot. That one went off the foot. 
Ivan Ignatovich. Still looking for our first goal here. We've played three minutes of the first half. 30 minute halves, and there's the first goal. And it comes off the shot by Crystal Colt. On defense, if you notice, Chicago has opted to play isolation on Mustafa, which means they're going to try to prevent him from even getting near the nine meter line. Here's Colt just inside nine meters, and Philip Florin, no chance on that one. I don't care how long you've been playing, but New York in red leads it 1 0. Inter looking to tie. Koziel takes the shot down in the corner of Lukas Dekovic. Foul called. Bidnarik. Muller with a shot off the goalpost. Back out of top to Bidnarik. Shoved off the ball, bounces it in the corner to Dakovic. Koziel sent that one far into the corner. Dakovic got hammered there. Christoph Immel and Ronald Klein are our referees here this afternoon. Both work in the German Federation. They run a very efficient court when they're out there. It's nice to have the Germans here. Germans efficient, really? Yes, very efficient. 25 and a half minutes to go first half. And Muller just misses. New York leads at 1-0, and that one a little bit too far for Radovanovic. So we're going to see this uh, substitution pattern here as Boyan Arnatovic now comes in, and Slavik Bednarik comes back in at the center back position. This is Bednarik with the ball. Arnatovic on left wing, and bounce that one in the corner. Very nice pass behind the back. Unfortunately, the circle pivot was held, and that's the foul. So the restart from nine meters. Salabi. Chicago still taking Mustafa out of the game. Colt tries to dish it off, and Shalabi like he took that one in the throat. Coke with a shot that's just wide. We've played six minutes and seen just one goal. Inter looking to get on the board. But Narek. Arnjacevic with the first goal of the game for Inter. It's 1-1. He's definitely their strongest arm from the nine meter line. Gets up high and picks out a corner. So it's 1 1 with 23 and a half minutes to go in the first half. Again, we're going to play two 30 minute halves. Clock runs nearly continuously. That one's tapped out over on the far side. And New York restarts it. Right wing and losing the handle there was going right the push. The other end, kick save by Ivan Ignacevic. Off the shot by Marco Dumuzia. And now we will stop the clock. This is one of the few times that the clock will actually stop is when the ball gets away and goes way back. Very good save. The Chicago bench, ageless Pavel Gritsch, the coach and sometimes player. We are in a 1 1 game. And Florin stops that shot by Christo Koch. The Chicago team's a very physical team, and they played one of the most physical teams yesterday in West Point. Radovanovic, their leading scorer with 32 goals, gets his first of the afternoon. No doubt the first of many. And it's 
2-1, New York. We're going to talk to Pignareff. See them move the ball from side to side and look for an opening. Syed Shalabi just blows that up real good and he'll get a yellow card. So much like in soccer, you'll see yellow cards. Rare red card, though we did see one game earlier this tournament with a couple of red cards in it. But in handball, the, two, the yellow card is a lesser foul than the two-minute penalty. Right. It's a warning that means watch yourself. Next time it could be that you'll be set off for two minutes. Lots of substitutions at uh, either end of the floor by Chicago. Florin comes up with a save but a foul before the shot. As Luka Stakovic took a tumble. Now off the restart, Mustafa is hit in the throat and that'll be a yellow card to Marcin Kozul. The throat is the area you cannot hit in handball at any time. Mustafa trying to pull his way through. He gets tied up there by Igor Lockhart. And we're going to have a seven meter throw here. As that attack was blown up, it'll be Syed Shalabi, seven meters away from Philip Florin, and easy as you please, he puts it home for a 3-1 New York lead. That's a tough shot for a first string goaltender to defend, let alone a center back who's playing goal. He's got to keep one foot on that line, it's seven meters away, picks out the spot. And they're flying high up 3-1, 28. 24, 2023 20, rather, to play here in the first half. The player went into the area, looks like. This is the style of play Chicago wants, keeping it low, keeping it slow, giving their guys rest. This is what they're going to try to do the entire game. Bounce on left wing! Because at any time, New York can strike. Just like they did there. Pierre Kazergis makes it a 4-1 game. Look at Kazergis get up. Look at that hang time. You can land inside the area as long as you release the ball. You take off from behind that six meter semicircle, but no player from either team can go into that area. That's the goalkeeper's area. So look to get shots from just outside of it, like that one by Boyan Arnatovic. That's his favorite shot right there, coming sidearm under the defender's outstretched hand. That is his second of the game, and it's 4 2 New York. They had a whistle at the other end. That's a charge call. In handball, uh, even if the defender is moving, you're not allowed to run into them. Now, Inter with the ball, trailing 4-2 with 19-10 to play in the first half. The thing to keep in mind, Greg, too, is that this is a very veteran Inter team as that kick save by Njatovic puts the ball back out. And now it's off the woodwork. And this is their sixth game in 52 hours. So the substitutions are key here. And there's a huge save. Philip Florin on a point blank shot by Saeed Shalabi. They really needed that after the two stops and the cross, the crossbar at the other end. They really needed that stop there. There you see Philip Florin again deputized when Lukas Kantor suffered a concussion last night. The semifinal went over West Point Black. Bounced that into the pivot. But Back comes into the other way, but take a look at this. Just stuck out his leg, did Florin, and he exults after a great save. At the other end, it's a foul called, and Inter will take the restart. As big Ahmed Saad comes in, number 19 with the ball now. Bidnarek finds Saad. Chicago down two at 4-2. We've got 17.54 to play in the first half. And looking to set up Saad, but they couldn't get there. And Christo Cole called for the foul. It'll be a restart here. Saad tried to look down in the corner. Nothing doing there. Get it back to Bednarik. Saad, he's got great leaping ability for a big man. Oh, and that's going to be two points on the takedown, I think, isn't it? As Vladimir Bisevic just picked up Ahmed Saad. He's going to live, but that is a foul. 
referees from the Bundesliga are not afraid to call fouls, but they're also very lenient in the beginning, giving teams warnings and, and, and explanations about what they expect in the play. Foul call there, we're gonna go tur turnover rather. We're gonna go back the other way. New York with a 4-2 lead, 17.05 to play in the first half. There's still Kolk. It's number three, we'll get it back up top to Saeed Shalabi. And in team handball, you must make a legitimate attempt to score. You can't just eat up clock by passing the ball back and forth, lest you be accused of passive play. Nothing passive about Syed Shalabi's second goal of the match. That was a brilliant series right there with the, with the hard defense, but the cutting to the hole and the great shot. Look at this takedown. You see the feet being taken down. It's safe to say that the next time that happens, it'll be either a card or a two minute. New York City in red leads Chicago Inter in black. 5-2 here in the first half. 16-14 to play in the first half. In a very physical team handball gold medal match in the men's elite division of the 2011 Berta Sport USA Team Handball National Club Championships. We are at the Salt Palace Convention Center in downtown Salt Lake City, Utah. Kent Tomas and Craig Rowe with you. Ahmed Saad tries to force his way through. And Bini Mustafa fouled him there. Bit of a sloppy restart. They get it back. Inter's women's team won the gold medal in our first match, 20 to 19 over New York City. And now Inter looking to do the double, but they're down 4-2, and they just turned this one over. Shalabi. On the break with a left-hander, Radovanovic floats in and scores. His 34th goal of the tournament, second today. You can see why he's such a strong scorer. Again, he's got to take off from behind that six-meter line, and he did. And he can, as long as he, he can land inside the area. So he had to take off from behind, and he did. We're going to have another yellow card here at the other end on Bini Mustafa. 6-2 New York, 14.47 to play. The first half, clock running as it does almost continuously here. Bednarik, out-muscled by Vladimir Bisevic. Again, here's Inter. They have some work to do here. Down by four in the early going and a double dribble. Break, break. And New York's gonna look to break quickly. Radovanovic again. The dipsy do, the left-hander goes again. His third goal of the game. And we're going to have a two-minute call as it looks like Ahmed Saad is the one going to be sent off. Take a look. Beautiful goal. A very strong goal. And Ahmed Saad has been sent off for two minutes. So we're going to see our first power play, a man advantage situation of the game. This is a very dangerous time for Chicago. Looks like we're actually sending multiple players off. New York leads Chicago 7-2 with 14-15 to go here in the first half of play. And Chicago down a man and they can eat some clock, but they still have to make legitimate attempts to score, so they're not called for passive play. Putting his shoulder down there was Marcin Koziel. He drew the foul. The players have to be three meters away when the restart, and that's what the referees were resetting. And sometimes you hope that will give you just enough space to get off a good shot. That one hit off the post. The reason for the three meters are some teams will do a quick start. And the defender, as soon as the ball is tossed, the defenders will come charging at the, the offensive players. Here we've got a seven meter throw, Marcin Koziol. I don't know, did you take too long? You only have three seconds from the time the whistle blows. So I wonder if that was the call. But this game is too fast moving sometimes to get an explanation on everything. And 
another yellow card now. As soon as the defender is to your side, you have to let him go through. You cannot hit the player. So now we're going to get a seven meter throw at the other end with Simon Miller, or no, Syed Shalabi. And you can bet he will not let time slip away before he puts that one home. His third goal of the match. And it's 8-2 New York with a chance for this to get out of hand if Chicago doesn't do something quickly. Shalabi just picked out a spot and went for it. Inter needs a goal here, trailing 8-2 with 12.28 to play in the first half. Kozil with a shot saved by Ignatovic. And New York will break it quickly. Radovanovic again, this time he goes low and gets his fourth goal of the match. Chicago has to find a way to stop the fast break. 9-2 New York, exactly 12 minutes to play in the first half. And again, it's not like in basketball where if another team goes on a run, you can take a timeout. And you could take a timeout, but each team only gets one per half and you need to use it judiciously. And now here's Bini Mustafa. Bouncing into the post to Vladimir Bisevich. He's fouled there. Bouncing on right wing. Radovanovic. That's their leading scorer with four of their nine to this point. Cole bounces it into Bisevich. And Bisevich scores with a man hanging all over him. Very nice pass into the pivot. First goal for the big Croatian. And it is 10-2 with 11-16 to play. And Igor Lockert has been sent off for two minutes. So things are going from bad to worse for Inter. Yeah, this is a part of the game. If you, if you do not find a way to stop the scoring against you, the score will get out of control fast. They just can't find the line, and they're not getting back on defense. Radovanovic with yet another break, and that time he missed it. Skipped it off the top of the crossbar. So just as soon as Ahmed Saad's penalty was over, Igor Lockhart is sent off. Entered down a man, and down 10-2 with 10.42 to play in the first half. This gold medal men, gold medal match in the men's elite division. And we do have our timeout by Chicago. Now, Pablo Griggs obviously has been around this game a long time. Is there anything you can say at this point when you're down 10-2 with 10 minutes left in the first half of a gold medal game? They have to get back on defense. Even, even more important than scoring right now is stopping the relentless fast break. But they don't have time. The fast breaks are coming so relentless they're not able to get back and do the transition. And so the no substitution. So normally offensive players, you know, with their with the skill set that's not suited for getting back and being physical, are left the responsibility of stopping a shot like that. You saw Ignatovic start that break, and uh, Roli Radovanovic has finished several of those today. That one was just off the mark. But his team leads it 10-2. As you look in Inter's huddle. 10 minutes and 38 seconds to go. Again, we told you this is their sixth game in 52 hours here at this tournament. And that would be a tough task for anybody, but for a team as veteran as Chicago is, it may be too much to ask. We'll see what happens here in the last 10.38 of the first half. See if Chicago can do some of those things. Again, they've got the ball, so scoring, obviously something they want to do, but more importantly is keeping New York and getting those easy fast break points. Kozil back to Bednarik. Top to Arnautovic. Kozil. Arnautovic pushed out wide. Tried to bounce it into Bednarik. Quick hands by New York to break that up, but foul called. That was taken quickly in a big save by the New York keeper. They're bringing the ball back because it was considered a, a man in the lane. So they're going to bring the ball back and the goalie reset. 
Now here's New York. New York is impressive. Christo Colt with his second goal. Things have gotten a little bit brighter in here. They opened a big, huge door at the other end of the gym. And let some of the warmth from an 80 degree day in Salt Lake City into this place. New York leads it 11-2. They're just getting warmed up. Inter, meanwhile, gonna put some cold water on this opening run by New York as Marcin Kozul gets fouled there by Vladimir Bisevich. And again, it's Bisevich and Kozul getting to know one another. These two teams met on Friday in pool play in New York beat Chicago 27-22. Here it's an 11-2 game with nine minutes and 12 seconds to go in the first half as they try to track down the ball back in the concessions area. Nine goal differential is a hard one to make up against a team like New York. Chicago will have its work cut out for them, especially going into the last minutes of the first half. They do have the ball now. A chance to score this trip. Dakovic gets it back out on top. Kozul bounces it into the pivot. Put home by Rafael Pamula. It's the first pass they've gotten through the whole game. And that makes it an 11-3 game with 8.45 to go. And again, after every goal, we have to have the restart. Center, nice. And they left him alone. Lost his mark, Shalabi, and scored, but still an eight-goal lead for the guys in red, New York. Foul there on Lukas Dakovic. Again, the restart. They'll run a lot of things to number 17, Sayed Shalabi. Vladimir Bisevich draws a crowd in the pivot. Bini Mustafa dishes it off. Filipora stops the shot from Shalabi. Inter breaking it the other way. And we've got a New York player down. That's Christo Kolk. They call the seven meter throw. The ball is never fun to land on. It's a very hard ball, very thick ball. Does not give. They'll help Christo Kolk up. Here's how it happened. Kozul on the break. And he landed hard on his lower back. And so Christo Kolk will go off and he'll be replaced by Yanni Sapatori. The seven meter throw is true. Marcin Kozul. New York 11, Chicago 4. Seven minutes and 35 seconds to play in the first half. Ken Tomash and Craig Rowe with you. From the Salt Palace Convention Center in Salt Lake City, Utah. The 2011 Berta Sport USA Team Handball Club National Championships. This is the men's gold medal come match. Come in, come in. And Saeed Shalabi couldn't keep that one in play. Inter back the other way. Chance to go on a little bit of a run, but it sailed over the bar by Marcin Kozul. Chicago has to do a better effort at getting the ball on goal. They've missed high, they've missed wide. They need to get the ball on goal for them to have any chance to make this, these points up. Exactly seven minutes to play in the first half. New York leads Chicago 11-4. It's New York in red, Chicago in black. And Syed Shalabi gets fouled there by Ahmed Saad. And again, they took the restart a little too quickly and not to the referee's liking. Bisevich dishes it off. And Sapatori is going into the area. Simon Mueller. Marcin Kozul on a bit of a run now with two straight goals. That wasn't what he intended, but it worked well for them. We talked about somebody's going to have to step up for Chicago. Kozul stepped up. Got the bounce, put it home. Now at the other end, New York leading 11-5 with 6.05 to play. And we're gonna have 
one sent off. And it looks like it'll be Chicago's Igor, Igor Lockhart sent off for the second time. And this can be problematic because once you've been sent off three times. And they rely on yeah. Igor for his physicality. You're done. So now New York with a six goal lead and the man advantage making a seven goal lead as Bini Mustafa gets his first goal of the match. 12-5 New York, 5.47 to play in the first half. And New York is up a man. So things going from bad to worse for Chicago. Bednarik. Muscle his way in, a turnover. New York tries to fast break and that broken up by Simon Muller. Five oh eight to play in the first half. New York and Red on the attack with a 12-5 lead over Chicago Inter. New York's bench telling his players to move the ball. Get it in the hands of Radovanovic for his fifth goal of the afternoon. He leads all scorers. And it's 13-5. Last couple goals have come with the man advantage. Kozio flips it back to Muller. Oh, shot is stopped by Ivan Ignatovic. Falling out on the far side. Chicago gets it back. Another save. Stakovic took a big left hander from the right wing. And Ignatovic. Came through with a big save. Big day for Ignatovic at the other end. There's the first of those two quick saves. And at the other end, foul called on Chicago. They'll restart with just under four minutes to play now in the first half. 13 to five, New York. Put it in the hands of Syed Shalabi and watch things happen. It's his fourth goal of the day. 14 to five, New York. So they finally killed off the penalty to Chicago. Ahmed Saad returns. Over three and a half to play, they're down by nine. Saad dishes it to Kozio, to Muller, who gets up high, but goes down low as he hits the court. You'll flip it back to Saad. Ball movement here by Chicago. They get down to the corner, though. Back to Muller. His shot is off the mark, and he goes down holding his left shoulder. He injured that shoulder in yesterday's game and actually came out for about the last four minutes of the game with an injured shoulder. Take a look here as he falls kind of awkwardly. Nomura is in for New York for his first action. Number 14, the number of goals his team has at the moment, leading at 14 to five. Big save by Philip Florin. Foul called before that. It's another big shot by Sayed Shalabi. Mustafa puts it in the corner. Lion King's second goal of the day. 15-5 with 2.20 to play in the first half. 10 goal lead for the guys in red. Kozio gets away from a defender but doesn't get that one past Ivan Ignatovic. He's having a terrific first half in goal. Mustafa gets away from Kozio. Dish again to Shalabi. And Saad just wraps him up. And we're going to have a 7 meter throw here as he just blew that attack up. Shalabi looking for his fifth. And an 11 goal lead. Shalabi and Radovanovic each with five goals. 
for New York, who leads it with a minute 32 to go by a score of 16 to 5. Again, we told you the first meeting in pool play between these two teams was a close one, 27-22 to New York. The penalties are killing Chicago right now. They need to have all six man, men on the court if they have any chance of getting back in this. Koziel shoved to the side. Ahmed Saad gets up high. Big collision there with Tech Nomura. And Nomura gives up probably about five or six inches and easily 50, 55 pounds to Ahmed Saad. The turnover. And here comes New York. 45 seconds to play now in the first half. Bidi Mustafa to Bisevic on the side. Fouled there by Lukas Dakovic. And New York's content to let those seconds tick off. They're up by 11. Florence stopped that one. Wicked shot by Syed Shalabi. It was low, though. And at the other end, Marco Dumlija misses. Final 15 seconds of the first half. New York leads it 16 to 5. 10 seconds now. To the post of Bisevic. Mustafa bounces it low and nice save there by Philip Florin. Ball fired down to the other end as the final throw of the first half. So after 30 minutes of play, New York City leads Chicago 16 to 5. Definitely not what Inter wanted to see happen in that first half but as you said Craig they they simply didn't have answers for the fast break and killing themselves with penalties the penalties are the first thing to get you behind and the continued penalties for them have gotten them way behind New York is impressive New York is fast and New York is physical and when you have only five against their six it's impossible to play I told you that uh, New York came into this match having averaged 31 goals a game in the tournament. They are halfway there and then some with 16 goals in the first half and Inter managing just five. So we are at halftime. So with 30 minutes to go, it's going to be take a Herculean effort by Chicago Inter uh, to make up this deficit in the second half. We'll see if they can do it. I'm Ken Tomash. He's Craig Rote. And uh, Craig, really, is there anything that you can do, or do you have to start doing little things and hope that they add up over time? You will likely see the coach from Chicago come into the game. He tends to be a grounding force for them, someone that kind of gives them the resolve to keep fighting. He coordinates the offense. Although he's not as physical and as young as the other players, he tends to keep them in line. Yesterday against West Point, when they were starting to dip, they had a five goal lead. They lost the lead, went down a goal. When he Powell came in, they ended up going back up by three and were able to withstand the heavy, heavy and relentless push of the young West Point players. Now New York has, I won't say they made it look completely easy, but they, they do so many things so well uh, that no matter what they do, they make it look easy. I only recall two mistakes from New York. One was the goalie pass out the end line and the pass off the side. When you have a team that's not making mistakes with an 11 goal lead, and it's virtually impossible to come back, especially if you're gonna to continue to be physical and get penalties that'll give you in the two minutes and then you're down again. They have to be able to withstand the press but not do too much and, and keep it with the numbers down. With a, 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 the 30 minutes goes pretty quickly, especially when you're down by 11 goals. Uh, what do you do here in the first few minutes? Do you try to break the game down into little chunks and maybe manage those chunks, or is there? Well, they're obviously the going over the things they're doing wrong right now for Chicago, and they're obviously going to come out with a different game plan. The first half game plan did not work. If they come back out at the second half and do not change things up, they will not score more than 12 goals in this game. Let's take a look at some of the action from the first half here and tell you what we're talking about. Uh, some physical play, and this is one of the last goals of the first half here is Mustafa. Mustafa puts it in the corner. We told you that Philip Florin is in because Lukas Cantor, uh, Chicago's normal goalkeeper, sustained a minor concussion last night uh, during the semifinal win over West Point Black. And so he's not in there. But as good as uh, New York is playing, Craig, I'm not sure that 
Cantor would have had much more success, maybe a couple that, that Florin maybe, maybe could have had, and maybe it might have been a difference, but uh, New York's just been a machine in the first half. One of the key benefits of having a veteran goalkeeper is to organize the defense. He, he can see things, and when you have a player like Phillip who's not used to watching the, def the offense come and what they need, you have a player now who's going to be uh, not as communicative with them. He needs to be vocal. He needs to guide his players, and that's going to be the big difference for them in not having the starting goalkeeper in. We're going to talk with uh, USA Team Handball General Manager Steve Pastorino here. It's uh, an exciting time for USA Team Handball. This obviously is the you know, three or four day celebration of, of the game in this country, the club national championships, but we have a huge opportunity for the men's national team coming up in three weeks' time as they will go down to Guatemala and get one last opportunity to qualify for the 2011 Pan Am Games in a three-way tournament with Guatemala and Uruguay. Steve Pastorino joins us now. And Steve, how big, can you put into words how big this opportunity is for the U.S. men in three weeks? Well, it's been an incredible month for us. We had the college national championships now, the, the elite and women's national championships, and we turn around in a couple weeks and we head to Guatemala. It's, um, it, it just demonstrates how much is going on in U.S. handball and frankly, we want our men in Guadalajara in the Pan Am Games. And so the 16 players that were selected, we uh, have a lot of faith in them. Uh, we think we've got a favorable uh, environment to play in. And the team is well prepared. They're coming off of a great week-long training camp in Madrid, Spain. And uh, we're ready to go. Where are you finding players to play for the national team? Uh, every country in Europe and uh, most states in the USA. We don't have one from... Uh, Alaska yet, but uh, thanks to Craig, we have players from places like North Dakota and Minnesota. But um, the latest addition to the team, Michael Williams, uh, the 18-year-old star center back for Flensburg's top youth team in the Bundesliga, will likely be playing with the first team next year. Uh, he'll make his international debut for us in uh, Guatemala, along with a player named Domagoy Sershin, six foot eight, 250 pounds, and uh, the second leading scorer for the third place team in the Croatian first. Uh, division RK Bielovar, both players born in the USA, uh, very impressive um, athletic uh, talents, but also players who grew up playing the game. We talk often in, in uh, when we're talking about national team, we need handball players and then we need some big bodies. And here in the US, we can grow big bodies. Um, handball players takes you know a generation of playing the game. And so we do look for players with uh, real diverse backgrounds. It's got to give you, too, hope for the future in that so many of these players you're identifying are young players, teenagers, people in their late teens, some even earlier than that. Kids are finding that this is, a, is a, a, an opportunity for them to represent their country. Uh, what do the kids bring to the table? Well, average age of the team going to Guadalajara is 23. U.S. men's national team average age was 33 when we started this about two and a half years ago. Sorry, Craig. I don't think you're going to get the call anytime soon. <laughs> but, um, no, the, uh, it, it's even more pronounced on, on the women's side where when they go into selection camp in July for the Pan Am Games team, there could be eight players under the age of 18 in that camp. And uh, these are players that we're already projecting where they're going to be in 2016. Where are they in their lives personally, scholastically, and then, of course, athletically, physically, and psychologically. And, uh, you know, 17-year-old players are going to be 22 coming into their prime in the 2016 Olympic cycle. And uh, we need that kind of time to work and develop with these players. Spent a lot of time this weekend talking to some of the young players about going to Europe in the fall. And I think we'll announce uh, an exciting, uh, I hate to say crop, but an exciting group of American players uh, going over to Europe again in September uh, to Denmark, Germany, uh, and all the other partner countries and clubs that we work at. Obviously, the thing that's going to happen when you have young players that are inexperienced is there's going to be growing pains, and we saw that with the U19s, but still, that's just all part of the process, and these players are going to be better for having gone through that, even though the results in the early term uh, might not look so great. Two years ago, the USA women lost to Norway 59-11 uh, to 11 in the tournament in Poland, and it was their senior national team against our basically under-19s. And uh, two years later, that you know, the core of that team beat Canada to qualify for the Pan Am Games, and I asked some of them about it. Our, our boys lost 60 to 8 to Argentina, who ended up winning the Pan Am Youth Championships. And uh, you know, the experience is in the rearview mirror. They've all said, you know what? It, we learned so much by going through that experience, and and it's only going to help us going forward. And uh, mark my words, there will not be any more 52 goal <laughs> losses uh, at any level from a U.S. team. We, we've turned the corner. 
and we're seeing a lot of that talent on display <laughs> here in, in this tournament on various teams. A lot of hope for the future coming out of this tournament. Absolutely, I mean, this is a, a challenging final for Chicago, not being with uh, their goalie, but some great playing time coming for uh, Marco Dumia out on the wing. He's a uh, 19, 20 year old kid that we found in Chicago a couple of years ago. His, played for us internationally in, in uh, exhibition environments and uh, would be one of those guys that we're looking at for a junior national team in, in about a year's time. And uh, you know, every club in America has helped us develop uh, young players. Um, Minnesota's got as good a track record as any and thank you for that, Craig. But um, you know, I, I, I've heard a lot of positive things about the tournament this weekend and I think one of the things we take away is uh, a lot of young players um, playing for the first time in Nationals here in Salt Lake City. Steve Pastorino, General Manager, USA Team Handball, thanks for your time. Thank you, Ken. Have a good second half. Good luck half, down guys. in Guatemala as the U.S. Men's National Team attempts to qualify for the Pan Am Games. The women have already qualified, and it will be the first time since 2003 that our teams have been playing in the Pan Am Games, so you see progress being made in the USA Team Handball National Team program. We're going to have to see progress by those guys in black here for the second half and you see number 13 there that is Pavel Grig, uh, player coach and he will insert himself apparently into the lineup uh, in the second half and the first question you may ask is how old is that guy? 58 years old but Craig wrote you said he brings a calmness to this team and that's something that they need right, at, right now starting the second half. Handball is always a collection of eccentric personalities <laughs> and they need every team needs someone like Powell to harness the strengths and minimize the weaknesses. Because it's an easy game to get out of hand and to get what's called chippy, which means you start doing stupid fouls that make you behind in the game. And someone like Powell will come in and be the, the reinforcement they need right now. You see the task at hand there, 16 to five. New York leads Chicago, and we're just about set to start the second half. That 11 goal deficit uh, here in the, in the first few minutes of the second half, do they close that gap a bit, or does New York seize this opportunity here to blow it open? We'll see here in the first few minutes. It won't take long before we have an idea as to how the rest of this match is going to play out. There is the New York Team Handball Club, Team Huddle. They were champions in 2008, 2009. Fell just short a year ago, losing in the semifinals, but they are 5-0 here in this tournament. Looking to make it six. And they are 30 minutes away from doing that. But the guys in black, Chicago Inter, an experienced bunch that will not go gently into that good night, even though they are down 11 goals here to start the second half of play. Ken Tomash and Craig Root with you. We are live at the Salt Palace Convention Center in downtown Salt Lake City, Utah. First time that the USA Team Handball Club National Championships have been held in Utah, the home base for USA Team Handball. And Chicago in black attacking from left to right. Here across your screen in the second half of play. And there is Pavel Griggs, number 13. It's New York leading it 16 to 5. Kozio flips it out to Muller, who definitely keeps it in. Kozio's shot goes off a defender. Vladimir Bisevich and out. So the throw-in will come from deep in that corner. Muller in some traffic. Foul called over there in the corner. So they'll restart it from there. Igor Lockhart triggers the restart. Kozio can't get through Vladimir Bisevich. Opening moments of the second half. Chicago looking to cut into an 11-goal lead. Another save there as New York has gone with Martin Strub Hidalgo in goal to start the second half. The Frenchman, now New York's first possession in the second 30 minutes. Bisevich bounces it into the post. Stevo Pepjanovic seeing his first action. Getting Mustafa off the restart. Bisevich. Oh! Left-handed shot and a goal by Jolie Radovanovic, his sixth goal of the afternoon. And it's New York 17, Chicago 5. Two minutes into the second half of play. Hey, 
again. Chicago in black. Deficit has grown to 12 goals. And Mustafa pushes Kozio way out high. Kozio almost turned that one over. Now he does. Kolk starts the break. Radovanovic can't find the target. That's only his second miss of the night. Could make a living off the fast break, couldn't he? New York 17, Chicago 5, 27-10 to go in regulation. Playing the second of two 30-minute halves. Chicago's women's team won the gold medal in the first game, 20-19 over New York. And New York City looking for a split here. Kozio can't get through. Pavel Greek shot score, uh, save rather. Martin Straub Hidalgo. Back comes New York on the break, but Christo Colt was fouled. Let's watch Martin Straub Hidalgo. Very nice pass. Good shot by Pavel, and Straub Hidalgo just did get a foot on it. Yeah, it was an even better save. Mustafa to Bisevich, flips it over his head right into the waiting hands of Boyan Arnachevich. And Bisevich is down. It looks like he took one in the nose, and it looks like somebody's going to be sent off for two minutes. Like we talked about at the halftime, the two minutes are hurting them, and they're going to hurt them even further because this is a critical time for Chicago. Their posture doesn't show a team that has the resolve to withstand the New York offense. They're not getting back on defense. And so it remains to be seen what's going to happen. And Eeyore Lockhart has been sent off for a third time, and that's it for him. He's been red carded for three two-minute penalties. And he won't be joining us for the rest of this match. His team will play, only play down for two minutes, though. I've played Igor countless times. He's a very, very physical player. You could say that about most of the 13 now guys that are on the floor at the moment, couldn't you? Uh, not in the same way with Igor. No. There are degrees of physicality. There you saw some in the pivot. New York 17, Chicago 5. Clock running with 25.45 to play in regulation. Now Pavel Grich will come out and Marcin Kozio will go back in. They bounce it on to right wing. Left-handed shot put home by Lukas Dakovic. That's his first goal of the afternoon at 17-6 with 25-25 to go. Good movement of the ball. Mustafa at the other end. He'll again bounce it to Radovanovic for his seventh. That left-handed shot from the right wing is just a staple of his game. Definitely the strongest in the tournament this year. New York 18, Chicago 6, with an even 25 minutes to play in regulation. Gold medal match in the men's elite division of the 2011 Berta Sport USA Team Handball Club National Championships. And a turnover comes to New York. They get it into the pivot. Big save there by Philip Florin. And Mustafa with a steal at the other end. Quickly turns into offense. As they'll dish it to the edge, and it's put in by Steve Pepjanovic. That was a costly error on the sideline by young Marco, uh, who Steve was speaking about at halftime. Uh, he did not, this will be his first time in two games actually being substituted. The substitution lane has expanded to almost reach midcourt. As you see, Steve Pepjanovic put that one home. 19 to 6, New York. Muller. He tries to turn on Mustafa, and Mustafa had him in a bear hug. But they're moving the ball, and that's what's going to be important for them right now. Big shot and a big save. Arnautovic with a huge shot, and Martin Strupp Hidalgo with a hand save that time. 
Bounced in and put home at the other end. Second straight goal by Steve Pepjanovic. No one was back on defense. The offensive player was standing on the line, wide open. Best shot handball. 20 to six, New York. Muller. Whip it down in the corner. And Scrub Hidalgo cut up his hands and blocked that one, but we've got a whistle before that. Are we going to have another seven meter throw? Yes, we are. Now Hidalgo is restrained by the four meter line, and Kozil has to keep a hand on the seven meter line. And Scrub Hidalgo stops it. Chicago has to take advantage of every opportunity they have. They won't have a whole lot of them with only 22.45 to go in the game. At least not enough to make up a 14 goal deficit. And New York can't just stall and run out the match. Obviously, they've got to make legitimate attempts to score. Bisevich drops it off. Coke shot. Stopped by Florin. Twenty-two fifteen to play in the game. New York twenty, Chicago six. Here's Muller. Gets it back from Jamila, and now Muller scores. First goal of the match for Simon Muller. After he had 19 coming in during the tournament. Gets he was within seven, uh, 20 to seven rather. He was their most effective player against West Point and he's definitely their only effective player right now. 21-37 to play in the game. Bisevich bounces it home. Seventh different player to score for New York. That's his second. Take another look, Bisevich from nine meters away. 21-13 to play in the game. 21-7 New York. Two touchdowns and they're right back in it. This game has definitely go gone the way New York expected. Chicago's going to need to make a very strong effort in these next three minutes or it's done. Muller gets up in a group hug there. Draws the restart. Clock continues to move. 20-49 now to play in the game. Bednarik off to Kozul. Try to bounce it back through and a foul call. That was very close to a kickball, which is a yep. penalty. Now off the restart, Chicago in black, trailing 21 7 with 20 25 to play in the game. Pavel Greek has reinserted himself. Muller. Steve Durs, who is going to get sent off. Durs had just come into the game. So that was quick. Looked like a hand in the throat area. So now Chicago with a man advantage, but a lot of work to do. Down 14 with an even 20 minutes to play in the game. And if they don't have the ball, they can't do much with it. On the break, Christo Koch. Missed connections with his man there, Taknamura. Chicago still with a man advantage. But quite the disadvantage on the scoreboard, trailing 21-7 with 19.37 to play in the game. Muller out to Arnautovic. Down to the corner to Dakovic. Time they'll try the left side. Ahmed Saad, will he just get up and try to bury it? He gets buried himself. Got to respect that three meter distance on the restart. Side armor doesn't go anywhere but off the mark for Arnautovic. Five moves. Five moves. 
Under 19 minutes to play now. Still a 14 goal advantage for New York City Team Handball Club in red. Ken Tomash and Craig Rote with you. Championship match for the 2011 Berta Sport USA Team Handball Club National Championships. The foul called before Mustafa put that one in. I think the silence of the crowd tells the whole story. Right. It's very quiet in here. The last game, which was a brutally fought game that was close throughout, was very loud in here. A lot of cheering, a lot of rival chants between the New York fans and the Chicago fans. It's dead silent in here. The other thing, too, is that the uh, Boston team is sitting across the, the court, and they're not about to cheer for New York. <laughs> No, not nope. especially after that semifinal game. Yeah, no love lost between New York and Boston in pretty much any sport, but definitely in the sport of team handball, as those two teams see each other quite a bit often in their league and had a very hard-fought semifinal. Yeah, we had just come off of our own game, our own semifinal last year, walked off to see Boston hit the, time with no, hit the shot with no time left. Marco Betch is great. Shot from about nine meters away. Reach with a shot. Strub Hidalgo makes yet another save. He's played the second half in goal for New York. He leads at 21-7 with 17-27 to play in the game. Look again, 58-year-old Pavel Grich gets loose, but Martin Strub Hidalgo equal to the task. Off to Colt. Steve Durs, who is back after serving his two minute suspension. He'll try to stay on the court a little longer this time. Mustafa to Bisevich. Bounces it home. That's the third time he's made that play. If it's working, stay with yeah, him. Yeah, who cares if you're a one note singer, if you can hit a note like that. 22 to 7. New York leads it with 16.39 to play in the second half. Bednarik drops it off to Ahmed Saad, back to Bednarik, tried to finesse that one in, and Strub Hidalgo got a piece of it, sent it over the bar. Now back on right wing, Radovanovic stopped again, coming back the other way. Bednarik can't find the handle, now he does. New York gets back. Shot by Boyan Arnatovic, his third goal of the game. Chicago's really missing youthful legs right now. 16 minutes to play, it's 22 to eight. New York leads it. Mustafa gets free from Ahmed Saad. Bisevich gets hit in the face by Ahmed Saad. Off the restart. Taknamura. Vladimir Bisevich. And at first it looked like Syed Shalabi didn't know quite what to do, but he's done that enough times that even he has to laugh about that one, his sixth goal of the game. Makes it 23-8, 15-25 to play in the game. Chicago's had good move movement these last three times down. They need, they need to continue that. But they can't have sloppy turnovers like that. Yeah, when the ball goes off the lower part of your leg, well, that is a turnover. Here's Petey Mustafa. Now Syed Shalabi on the right side. Now they spread the floor. Still will have to make an attack. Try to bounce that one through the legs of Boyan Arnatovic. We'll go all the way back to Martin Strub Hidalgo. Again, they can't just stall all day. We've got no indication of passive play just yet. And that's why. Syed Shalabi with his seventh goal. And Chicago wants to use their timeout here with 14.15 to play in the match. Actually, the clock is still running. Should be 14.15. Although at this point, I'm not sure that Chicago would mind terribly. 
for a little more clock to be run off. But they are down 24-8 here in the second half of play. They've just used their one and only timeout of the half. And New York has been at this long enough to know that you don't celebrate quite yet, but they are pleasing each other. Here's the kind of uh, thing we're talking about in terms of how simple it has looked for New York at times today. Shalabi looked like he wanted to set it off on the right wing, then just decided, you know what, I'm just going to take it myself. And even Jolie Radovanovic has to laugh at that one. That's the type of hole when you are looking to pass, it's when you have a 16-goal lead. They're playing right now. They're playing around. They're youthful. They're running. Chicago's not getting back. It's going to be a hard deficit. Hard to score 16 on on New York in a game, let alone come back by 16 with only 14 to go. New York, through this tournament, has allowed about 24 goals per game, but they've scored 31, so you can do that. And they've got a real good chance here, obviously, to meet or beat their average, leading 24-8 with 14-15 to play in the game. So back from the timeout, Chicago Inter in black. A long way to go and a short time to get there. 14.05 to play in regulation. New York leads them 24-8. Pass it around the perimeter. Ahmed Saad. Pavel Grieps loses the handle and a double dribble. New York can work deliberately. Happy to watch the seconds tick away. Their bench with Richard Clues telling them, speed it up, guys. And so they do. A little bit more spring in the step here. When you have so many shooters with great aim, great arms, it's only a matter of time before one of them gets free. For Chicago, they have to keep the line solid. Again on right wing. And he bounced to Sapsori. Visevich. Oh, catch and release and score. Here, Kazurgis. Only his second goal, but that one was pretty. May not have been appreciated by their opponents who are now down 17. New York 25, Chicago 8, 12 minutes and 43 seconds to play in the game. And New York's women's team right across the court from us who fell in the first game today as Rafael Pamula puts home a rare goal for Chicago. They, uh, they aren't even overly enthused. Their brethren are up 25-9 been a long tournament for everybody. Lots of action here at the Salt Palace Convention Center over the last three days. Started early on Friday morning and culminates here with the final match of this tournament, men's gold medal match. Steve Durs turns and fires and he gets blown up real good. Looks like we're going to have a seven meter throw for him or for his team. Durs doesn't look like he's going to take it. Instead it'll be Joey Radovanovic against Philip Florin. Lefty Radovanovic gets stopped by Florin. Florin's had his moments today in relief of Lukas Kantor. And now a little bit of a cry goes up as Inter's Rafael Pomula scores his second consecutive goal. It's 25-10. The last two times down were the first two times New York hasn't been back to the line before Chicago. Now forcing his way in and scoring is Yanni Sepatori. It's his first goal and becomes the eighth different New York player to score. New York 26, Chicago 10. We're under 11 minutes now to play in the game. Jakovic 
can't get through. We'll try to find Pamula once again. And it's going to be a two on none break. Finished by Syed Shalabi. He leads all scorers with eight. Yeah, the Chicago players are now just walking. You can see it in their posture. It's going to be a difficult 10 minutes to endure. We are just under 10 minutes to play in the gold medal match. It's New York 27. Chicago 10, Ahmed Saad gets the ball back. Tried to dump it into Pamula. Here's the easy fast break that we just saw. Bisevich behind the back. Kazergis. Finished by Shalabi. Here they come back the other end looking for more. Attack Nomura. Stopped by Philip Florin. And now Florin will throw it long and out of play on the far side. Inter will take the throw. 9.05 to play in the game. New York 27, Chicago 10. Bidnarik. Ahmed Saad forces his way in and scores. His first goal of the match, the big Egyptian. 27 to 11 with 8.37 to play. And here's the point, Craig, in a lot of sports where, you know, if you're down this much with this little time left, you'd start getting the younger players in off the bench. I'm not sure Chicago has any. Chicago suffered many injuries over the course of this tournament. The sixth game is always a game where you're down to maybe three or four bench players. Um, at this point, though, it's about dignity. Chicago needs to finish strong, needs to try to move the ball, needs to keep their feet going. They're standing still, and it's going to hurt them. Yanni Sapatoria had scored at the other end, his second goal of the match, and it's 28 11. Pamula dishes this one off. Kozil. And a foul on the pivot as they look to get it to Rafael Pamula. 7.40 to play in the game. Ahmed Saad. Taken to ground by Stevo Pepjanovic. And another seven meter throw. And they'll send Slavic Bignarek back into the game just to take this throw. Got to keep a foot on that seven meter line. And he's got three seconds to get rid of it. And he hits it off the post, but gets his own rebound. Tries again, hits the crossbar. And Muller went into the area to try to collect that rebound. So nothing going well for Chicago this afternoon. Here's Vladimir Bisevic floating in and scoring. Again. Off the post, gets it back, still outside the area. Tries again, bounces, and off the post, and off the crossbar, and Muller can't go into the area without getting called for an infraction. 6.28 to play in the game. 29 to 11. New York leads it. Try for a steal there, and Ahmed Saad gets fouled at the edge of the area. Pamula finds an opening, but it loses the handle. And they'll break it again. New York at the other end. The fake and a stop by Florin. He makes another stop on the rebound by Shalabi. And that draws maybe the biggest applause of the second half. Even Shalabi has to appreciate that one. The 
Got it again. First kick save. Bounces right out to Shalabi. And Philip Florin tries to stop the 7 meter throw but can't. Shalabi gets his ninth. Tough situation for Philip Florin to be put into. But he's done his best. Definitely not the team you want to make the tournament debut against. No, not at all. Not at that position. New York, very close to hitting their tournament average. They've got 30. As Ahmed Saad puts that one out of play. We're under five minutes to play. Four forty-five left now. New York thirty, Chicago eleven. Muller trying to force his way past his opposite number, Taknamura, and off the restart. Saad went off the knee of Marcin Kozul. Shot goes wide. Martin Strub Hidalgo will send that one super long, and Florin collides with Tak Nomura. And they're going to call Nomura for going into the area. <laughs> 4 10 to play, second half. New York 30, Chicago 11. These four minutes will feel like four hours for the Chicago players. They want it to be done. The beauty of a continuously running clock is Ahmed Saad takes four steps but puts it home. Second goal of the match. 30 to 12, New York. New York with the big lead. They get it into Pepjanovic in the pivot. And he's fouled there by Rafael Pamula. 3.28 to play. Vladimir Bisevich. Sayed Shalabi. No, oh, whistle first. We're going back the other way. Quickly, as it turns out, watching Kozyol off the woodwork. Even when they get a wide open fast break, the ball will not go in. Can't help but root for them just to get it in. Two fifty to play in the game now. It's just a countdown to what's been largely inevitable since about midway through the first half. Chicago trailed by eleven at the break. They're down eighteen now. Make it nineteen. Taknamura gets his first goal. Ninth different New York player to score. Only the two goalies, Steve Durs and Michael Moskal, who hasn't played, have not scored for New York. 2-10 to play in the game. Lukas Jakovic gets fouled. Exactly two minutes to play. Muller, Ahmed Saad, his patented move to get up high. That was off, but we've got a whistle and a foul beforehand. His is a massive body to be running full speed to get in front of. And at this point, New York's not even going to attempt it. Yeah, my dad always used to say discretion is the better part of valor. And as... Muller hits the deck. He gets back up. The clock is stopped temporarily with a minute 38 to play. And it will be a two-minute send-off. So Chicago will finish this game with man advantage as Muller misses. And we're going to have a seven meter throw here. Minute 20 to play in the game. We're 
it looks like they considered here sending Lucas Cantor into the match briefly, but no. And it's just a laugh for now. One minute to play in the game. Many of New York starters are still in the game. This is something you file away and remember for next year in Minneapolis. As Vladimir Bisevich with his fifth goal, he puts a capper on it. 38 seconds to go. New York 32, Chicago 12. 20 goal blowout here. 25 seconds left. Chicago trying to salvage anything. Ahmed Saad, and he's in pain. Yeah. He is in obvious distress. At this point in the game, you hate to see a player. Oh my go gosh. Down. Especially with 20 seconds left in a blow like this, and Ahmed Saad still trying to play hard and play to the end. And it's going to be a long flight home. Class act by the New York guys to carry him off. Surprised it only took two of them. So he went down, grabbing that right knee. And they're going to help him off to his bench. Ahmed Saad, very popular player. It's been a day of injuries here at the Salt it Palace. It has been. 20 seconds remain. Chicago off the restart. Muller dishes it down in the corner. And Lukas Dakovic gets what might be the final goal of the championship match. Unless Tech Nomura can score at the other end, and he does. Nomura second. And for the third time in four years, New York City is the toast of the town. They win it by the final score of 33 to 13. Champions in 2008, 2009, and now 2011. The New York City Team Handball Club celebrates a well-deserved championship. They were methodical. They were efficient. They were everything that they showed that they were all through this tournament, Greg. And they had the energy to push Chicago, Chicago past the brink. Chicago did not stand a chance against the relentless fast break. Chicago, we talked about their injuries. Lucas Cantor, their number one goalkeeper, could not play. Uh, there's, these tournaments sometimes are a war of attrition over the course of a few days. They played six games in about 54 hours and just did not have the energy left uh, to overcome this New York City team handball club, which is loaded and which got goals from nine different players in a 33-13 route. That caps the 2011 Bird of Sport USA Team Handball Club National Championships. A well-deserved celebration. They're used to it by now. So the final score once again, the New York City Team Handball Club 33, Chicago Inter 13. So both teams we saw win today won their third title in four years, and each city got one. Inter's women won a thrilling women's final, 20 to 19 over New York City. And here it was not that close. The final, New York 33, Chicago 13. Inter still a very proud club in their 20th year. Finished ninth in 2009 and sixth last year. And we're going to talk to Benny Mustafa here in a second, one of the stalwarts of this New York team. The final again, New York 33, Chicago 13. Benny Mustafa with us now. Third time in four years. Benny, how's it feel? Oh, it feels great. Uh, this is uh, something we've prepared for 
especially since the last year, since we had a difficult, dramatic loss. Right. And uh, we're glad we came through this year and uh, with the same group of guys that uh, worked together for the whole you year. Talk about, you got so many contributions today from so many different guys. Nine different players scored. Is that really what your team is about? Is everybody pitching in? I think that's a good point. I mean, our team is uh, as diverse as it is from every part of the world. It's also playing-wise. Everybody has a, a different uh, set of skills that contributes at all times. If one guy doesn't play well, there's always going to be somebody else that steps up. How much did the loss in the semifinals last year to Boston motivate you? I see the smile coming out, so I bet it was a lot. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a long year to wait. I mean, we waited for this moment. I, I know for me, especially for me, uh, a loss like that stays with you for, for a long time. Even though if it's an amateur sport, we love this game, and uh, it was hard. It was hard uh, then, and uh, now we're glad we did it. Uh, uh, the whole year. So year. when you got here, what was the what was the determination? What did you say? We're going to do this and this and this to get to this back to this point. Well, ideally, I mean, we wanted to play one game at a time, one ball at a time. Uh, we didn't underestimate anybody this time like we did last year. Uh, and we actually said to ourselves, we're going to try to prove it to ourselves. We can win it again, mm -hmm. like we did it three, two years, uh, uh, two years ago. When you played Chicago last time, it was much uh, closer in pool play, and obviously they had some injuries since then. They were in a tough position with their backup, with a, with a goalkeeper who was not their regular goalkeeper in. But you guys didn't, it seems like you just went out and played your game and did the things you needed to do as you've done all tournament long. Well, we know Chicago. We play with them a lot, and uh, we know their style. They know our style. I think uh, at this point, at this level, uh, age difference makes uh, mm -hmm. a big, big difference in the game. I mean, they're a little older. They're experienced player, but playing three games uh, yesterday and coming back fresh, uh, we had an advantage in that. Part. What about for you guys? Talk about that now. Three, three titles in four years. Are you young enough to keep this dynasty going for another few years? We're hoping. I mean, uh, uh, with handball in uh, Team Handball in, in USA, it's, uh, we always get fresh blood from everywhere. Like New York is a big city. Mm -hmm. People love it. Uh, and we get people from all over the world. And, and the team always needs some two new players to, to bring that, uh, that blood flowing to win another title. Well, congratulations, Benny, on a third title in four years. You get back on top after a rough year last year. You guys deserved it. Thank you very much. Thanks so Appreciate much. Benny Mustafa. And there you see the trophies that they will uh, be taking home very, very shortly as we're going to have presentations for third, second, and first place. And uh, Inter, after a ninth place finish two years ago and a sixth place finish last year, finishes second this time around. Maybe things could have broken a little differently. They are going to need, Mustafa talked about uh, retooling and getting new blood in. Chicago's a big city, too. There's got to be some, some guys there that they can bring into that club as well, uh, a club with that's rich in tradition, and you'd like to see them back uh, near the top of things. I know you wouldn't because you're not particularly fond of Chicago, but that's just the way it is. But anyway, team handball is a sport that constantly getting young and getting new blood in. One of the things that hurt Chicago is the creation of the UIC team, mm -hmm. which drew away a lot of the players that they relied upon for speed, for youth and athleticism. Two of their players went to Denmark and are at a handball academy in Aarhus. And so the loss of these players uh, matters greatly to them. All right, we're going to bring in the third place team. Boston's Team Handball Club finished third, beating West Point Black as the New England Freeze a year ago. They were the team that knocked New York out in the semifinals on a dramatic last second restart shot. And they... The fact that that shot was, was done on New York made it even more impressive because that's impossible right. against a weak team, but against New York it was beautiful. So they lost in the final last year, did New England. They lost to Los Angeles. Los Angeles eliminated in, in pool play here in this tournament. Now renamed the Boston Team Handball Club. They come in and finish third, and they will accept the bronze medals here. And so, so much outstanding team handball in the Northeast Corridor between New York City and and Boston, who know each other very well, play each other all the time. The guys at West Point are outstanding. But now, as we talked earlier with Steve, that at halftime, and you're part of this too in Minnesota, that we're seeing other cities and other markets and other clubs start to shine and to make their presence known. It's only a matter of time before we see more and more as the sport takes hold. We'll see more new faces and new clubs popping up at celebrations like this. What's interesting is we were 19th out of 20 three years ago, 
Last year, we were the silver medalists in the open competition. Last year, Salt Lake City finished last in the open division, and they made a strong showing. They, played, they were playing in elite, which was a difficult mm -hmm. transition for a second-year team. Anytime you have to step up to this level of competition, this level of physicality that you don't see in practice, it becomes a very difficult tournament for them. But they played well. They kept their games close, and you have teams like Salt Lake and Minnesota and other young teams like Georgia that was the silver medalist in the Open Division this year, a second-year team. Boston getting their third-place medals. Quite a run for them as well, second a year ago and third this year. And after this, we'll have presentations of the second-place and first-place teams. Let me give props to some of the other outstanding performances that we saw in this tournament over the course of three days. We told you, obviously, if you were with us for the first game, that uh, Chicago Inter won for the third time in four years, beating New York City 20-19 to in a great final. But we also saw New York Athletic Club Dynamo team finish third. Good showing by Carolina's women, Carolina Blue. And, and here is the Boston Team Handball Club congratulating themselves on a tournament well fought. Thank you, Boston. And now before I present the awards for the first and second place teams, I'd just like to make an announcement if we can have a round of applause for all of the officials who refereed and whistled games this Now big hands for the officials who are teams, obviously and Buxo, not always the most popular people in any tournament in Donald, any sport, but Christoph, they'll Milan, get a big hand. The guys uh, in the final did a good job here. And Thank you very much for all your work. It's tough weekend. to officiate this sport too, isn't it? You have a lot of obstacles in your way. You have uh, line of sight up, issues. It's fast moving. Fingers. You have to be looking at the ball, the player, Chicago. and the line. The German referees, of course, they're Bundesliga first division referees. They've seen it all. They've experienced it all. So they, they did an excellent job officiating this game. They allowed the play to be physical without preventing it from being violent. And you have to manage a lot of different temperaments and personalities as well. You have so many different personalities in this game. Uh, from so much, so many different levels of experience and experience and uh, experiences from around the world and worldviews and stuff that it can really make things uh, very, very interesting as here as Chicago Inter gets their second place medals. Boyan Arnautovic there. Simon Wooler. Dieter Esch, the chairman of USA Team Handball, had to catch a flight to Paris. So after handing out the medals and hardware for the women's match, he is on a plane at the moment. And so Chicago Inter receiving their medals now. Rafael Pomola, who had three goals here in the final. Lukas Dakovic. There you see Lukas Kantor. Looks okay, but you can't uh, can't mess with the head injury. I spoke with him before the game. He's he's struggling. He uh, he played three games yesterday, and after the hard-fought final one against West Point Black, was uh, taken ill. Good to see him up and around, but didn't want to risk having him play today. The doctors would not clear him, and in his stead, Philip Florin did the best he could in goal. Not sure anything would have been enough today, but what a season and what a performance and by Internazionale of Chicago. And you see Ahmed Saad there who went off with a knee injury late, but he's kind of a little bit gingerly walking. Well, that's a good sign. That is a very good sign. He won't have to be carried onto the airplane. I'll tell you what, you don't want to be in the middle seat and now, next to him. Welcome Even on the, the best of days. And now for the winners. Third time in four years. They'll tell you they thought it should have been four years in a row, but this one's still sweet. 
as they beat Inter 33-13 in the gold medal match. Richard Clues, you see Steve Durs. They are your national champions in the elite division for 2011. Steve Opefjanovic, who had a couple of goals in the second half. Taknamura, who had a pair, that, including the final one. That made it a 20-point margin. New York City Team Handball Club, founded in 1973. That has to make it one of the older ones in the country. Isn't it, Craig? Yes, that's, if not the oldest. I know West Point's about the same age. Um, but young teams are good. Young teams are coming on. I like, I like the state of handball right now. We've got teams in every region growing, trying to start campus uni university programs, which is impossible because it's a, you get four solid years. And right. Martin Strub Hidalgo, number one there, who played in the second half. Syed Shalabi, who can afford to celebrate after team high nine goals. Jolie Radovanovic finished with eight goals today and 40 for the tournament to lead everybody. And they celebrate with their fans. And now for the presentation of the They're the women's team that champion. fought so gamely in the gold medal match. Curtis Sport presenting the trophy. To the goalie, number six. And now the championship trophy, Ivan Ignacevic, who played so well in the first half, allowing just five goals. And it belongs to New York. What a day, what a moment for them. As they beat Chicago 33-13, the culmination of an outstanding tournament and a great day of the sport of team handball. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. So for all of us here at the Salt Palace Convention Center in Salt Lake City, Utah, for my partner, Craig Rote, I'm Ken Tomash. Thanking you so much for joining us. This has been a presentation of USA Team Handball. Thanks for watching and visit usateamhandball.org to find out more about this great and growing sport. The final once again in the men's division, New York City Team Handball Club 33, Chicago Inter 13. Good night from Salt Lake City.